The circuit description of this multivibrator circuit I did in the previous video to this one. In this video, I want to see what happens when I overload the circuit. I'm first going to start with adding a radio across the right LED to see what happens. And then I'm going to put an incandescent bulb, a number 49 bulb, across the LED to see what happens. And then I'm going to change it so it also shorts out the 470 ohm resistor. We've seen this multi-vibrator before and I wanted to see how stable this circuit is using MOSFETs. So I'm going to be hooking up this transistor radio across the LED. And the radio plays pretty good. Now it's been my experience that if I would have built this with regular junction transistors, this circuit would have stopped working. So MOSFETs seem to be pretty stable. As we saw in the video, when the right LED lights, the radio plays, and you notice that the LED does vary with the drain from the radio. And it's been my experience that this wouldn't happen if I had junction transistors. Chances are the circuit would stop working. Now let's see what happens when I hook up an incandescent bulb across the LED. The multivibrator is running again and this time I'm going to hook up a 49 bulb across the right LED and it looks like it stopped working but it actually is still working look at the red LED at the bottom there's still current going through there there's not enough current to really light the bulb very much but it is just beginning to glow and here I'm zooming in and the reflection of the light happens to be at a bad spot but if you look closely you can see that bulb just begins to glow so the multivibrator is still working even though the impedance has been changed quite a lot Now I'm going to short out the drain resistor and we'll see what happens now. Now the circuit has stopped. And even when I pull the 49 bulb out, nothing is happening. And I tested this for hours. It has shut down 
To turn it back on, all you have to do is turn off power. Turn power back on and it starts running again. With the incandescent bulb across the diode, the diode won't light because the bulb is only four and a half ohms. We could see it barely glowing in this configuration, but we could see that that part of the circuit was still working because the red LED still came on. This is showing the path that charges the 220 microfarad capacitor on the left side and that is eventually going to turn off the left MOSFET. The blue squares are showing the path that's going to light the bulb when the right MOSFET turns on from the ground up through the 100 ohm resistor through S through the MOSFET out of D and then in and out of the bulb and over to the positive 24 volts. Now the left LED is on and that capacitor now has charged up enough to turn the left MOSFET off and now the right one is turning on and it is very bright. But as this is going on, this path is charging up the right 220 microfarad capacitor and it will turn off the right side. And now we've got this situation. Both MOSFETs are turned off because both the gates are negative. And as we saw in the video, even when I remove the bulb, it remains in that state. So if there is an overload on either side, the circuit will do this. Both gates will go negative, turning off both MOSFETs. And I tested this circuit for hours and it stayed just like that. And when we saw, or as we saw in the video, all I had to do was turn the power off and turn the power back on and the circuit started running again. From this experiment, it seems to me like a MOSFET is a good choice for this type of circuit. Thanks for watching.